Hello and welcome to the video. Today is Friday and we are wrapping up Black Friday orders at BPN HQ. So the team is inside. We had over 25,000 orders come in. We sold over 100,000 units. So we're kicking off this Friday with a little cook-off. We got Preston on the Traeger. I think he's doing like some brats and some chicken thighs. I'm on the Samson back there, which is heating up. I am doing burgers on the Samson. We have some sides in, inside. Lunch should be ready, I'd say in about 25 minutes. We'll see who wins. Preston, myself, Bear Brothers. Chicken thighs soaked in sweet baby rays before, and we also have some some sausages. So I like just the HEB brand jalapeno and the original. Usually with the sausages, I'll I'll get them going for about 200 degrees, so slow cook them for an hour or so, and then leave them on the last 45 minutes at a higher higher temperature. But I love those are my two favorite things to grill: sausage and then chicken thighs. So we have two completely separate cooking techniques going on right now. The Traeger cooks on wood pellets, which Preston is using. I'm on the Samson, which is a broiler, uses propane, and I believe this broiler gets to like 1600 degrees. You can cook a really good steak on it. We're gonna do these burgers on here today. Oh yeah. All right, Cox, <laughs> brat or burger? Probably gonna go with the brat. Dude! Sorry. <laughs> I'm a burger guy. So this burger with bacon jam. So I win over Preston. You win over Preston. Brat. Chicken or burger? I've only had the chicken, so the chicken. So freaking good. I have some uh, some home prepared bratwurst from none other than the legendary Preston Bear himself. Got some sauerkraut. We got some uh, mustard on there. I'm keeping it simple. A good dog doesn't need, you know, improvement. Mm. Don't tell me I won just because I'm here. Tell me the truth. No, ma'am. Burger is nice and juicy, moist, the brat. Nice crisp on the outside with the sauerkraut as well. That tastes really good. Has a little sweetness on the burger. I don't know what it is, but I'm a fan of the burger. Burger wins. <laughs> yeah! I don't know about that. Welcome to the first annual Black Friday Bear Bro Barbecue Off. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> We've had Two of the best grillers in Texas, in all of Texas, <laughs> step up to the plate today to deliver the freshest meats and sides Texas has to offer. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I will raise Nick's hand. You will scream for Nick if you were Team Hamburger. I will raise Preston's hand. You will scream if you are Team Chicken Thigh and Wiener Schnitzels. <laughs> can, they, can they boo if they want? Very fitting for your personality. Okay, whoever has more noise will win this golden spatula. First up, ladies and gentlemen, from Palmyra, Pennsylvania, <laughs> weighing at a sleek 221. 250, I'm down to 250. 215, his biceps 18 and a half inches. Ladies and gentlemen, Preston Bear! <laughs> serve as a reminder, the man that pays every single one of us in this building. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know him as Nick Bear Fitness! I'm not too happy about this. With well, that being said, I want to thank you for, which will now be your last Black Friday you ever worked. <laughs> but in all seriousness, thank you all for the work this past week. Greatly appreciate it. Um, 25,000 orders in, over 100,000 units of product. And this was by far the most smooth, effective, efficient Black Friday sale launch in general we've ever done. Uh, it was like a well-oiled machine. And to watch it happen was Beautiful. It was an orchestra. Go one more.
So I just got home from work and I'm gonna hit a workout in the garage gym, which is right behind me. Today is going to be a pool workout. So we're gonna start with some core. I'll walk you through that and then pull-ups, deadlifts, um, kettlebell swings and hyper extensions. Those are the four movements we're doing after core right now. You guys know my favorite core activation warm up three to four sets. Today I'm doing four sets. Each set is 15 hanging leg raises, 15 GHG sit ups, and an L sit as long as possible. You rest about 60 seconds in between each superset. I'm about to do my last L sit. It's for as long as possible. If you have a dip bar or parallel bars, like these are the rogue parallel bars, great for L sits. So you just try to hold it as long as possible. Your body will start shaking at some point. Try to hold that L and breathe through it. There we go. Last set to failure. Keep your legs up. You will get full body shakes. I respect all gymnasts. All right, core is done. Now for some pull-ups. So here's one of the newest pieces to the home gym, got this steer here. But I wanted to go over the bars we have here at the gym. All right, so this is a Rep Fitness Gladiator bar. This is a Rogue Ohio bar that I've had since 2016. As you can see, it's a little rusted. This right here, my friends, this is what we're using today. This is one of my favorite bars. This is a Texas deadlift bar. This thing has a lot of whip. It is a beauty. And then this Ohio bar we picked up at the Rogue Invitational, which was here in Round Rock a few weeks ago. But today, Texas deadlift bar, I love you. So I'm working up to 405 pounds right now. Deadlifts is one of those movements for me at least that the more consistent and frequent I do it, the better it feels. Like today it feels like butter. I used to deadlift like two to three times a week and it felt like butter. But what I'm gonna do is take my watch off and I'm gonna throw on the lifting straps. I wear lifting straps. These are two different brands. I just have like a, a a big tote of lifting straps from over the years. The reason I love the Texas deadlift bar so much is because it has a lot of whip. So you can pull like an inch or two inches out of the bar, slack out of the bar, before actually pulling the weight going into the movement. So here we go. So watching people deadlift over the years, I've noticed a lot of things. One of those things, I used to do it myself, were that my feet were too wide and my hands were too wide on the bar. Essentially, I was set up like a snatch deadlift, which is a movement in itself. But the problem and the risk with that is if your feet are too wide, too far apart, your hands are positioned too far away from the center of the bar and your hip mobility, your ankle mobility, your shoulder mobility isn't necessarily there. It's gonna put you in a compromised position 
it puts a lot of load on the back and doesn't utilize your leg drive at all. So one thing you can do is bring the feet a little closer. I keep my feet pretty close. Bring your hands a little closer on the bar, get in that good position, be able to tuck your shoulders, tuck your lats back, retract the shoulder blades, and then drive through your feet, keeping your butt from shooting up. Just uh, some quick things you can fix on the deadlift right away. Beautiful, brisk Saturday morning. Kicking it off with a little cup of coffee before I go on my morning run, which is 12 miles for the day. This week, this past week, we're wrapping up the week today, is a down week in ultra prep. So total, I will complete about 49 miles this week. Last week was 70 miles total. Next week, I will probably finish off with about 73 miles total. Next Saturday's long run will probably be 27 to 28 miles. But this morning, a nice, easy 12. Now before I head out, I wanna leave you with this. About two weeks ago, Courtney DeWalter was in town and she was on our podcast. Courtney is an ultra runner, super, super talented, like the best of the best. The podcast with Courtney was amazing. And I'm gonna share this segment right here before I literally go run right now about her description of building and chiseling away her pain cave. I'll link the podcast below in the description, but if you haven't listened to it yet, you must go listen to it. It was gold. So mine, yours is a meter and mine I think of as the pain cave and like chiseling it out to be bigger. So every race I can go in there and make my capacity for that suffering or for pushing through things a little bit bigger by making this pain cave larger in my head. Do you enter the pain cave now at a later point or is it you can be in the pain cave deeper? It, I mean, it's all just an image that I've concocted for myself, but well, I- I have this image in my head right now too, where I'm, I'm like picturing this cave. Yeah. yeah, so I enter at the same point, but I'm trying to make it as big as possible. So like tunneling in different directions, maybe depending on the challenge or the type of race it is, or just making areas like wider and bigger so that there's more room to go in there the next time when I encounter it again. And that is run complete. 12 miles, one hour, 37 minutes, 44 seconds at an 8.09 minute per mile pace. 12 miles, done. Got some sweat dripping from the hat. This is what was going through my mind during that run. So my buddy, Jeremiah Sullivan, he was on the podcast a few weeks ago. He reposted something Cam Hain said, and it was, those who aren't willing to sacrifice will cry the loudest. And that in turn made me start thinking because I agree with it. And if I had to contribute a characteristic that you can work on right now to start achieving success, however you determine that, or reaching your goals and objectives, it would be to consistently commit to hard or difficult tasks, whether that be physical, mental, family, business, financial, when you consistently, consistently commit to hard and difficult tasks, it puts the responsibility on you. It makes you maintain accountability and responsibility for what you want to and will achieve. I think that's one of the, the biggest things that people miss and don't understand the true power and value of. Commitment seeing things through till the end and doing that on a, a consistent basis, that's when it's just, it's game changing. It is very, very rewarding. Okay, so as Steph is getting some of the Christmas decorations out, I'm gonna make us some protein banana bread. 
and I'm kind of making this off the cuff. I've referenced a few recipes, but made some modifications. So what I'm gonna add, starting back here, one cup of almond flour. I'm going to do about two to three tablespoons of this Swerve brown sugar, which is erythritol. I'm gonna do two scoops of vanilla BPN whey protein, one tablespoon of coconut oil, one egg, half teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, one tablespoon of honey, two ripe bananas, about two tablespoons of Kerrygold butter, a half tablespoon of cinnamon, and a pinch of salt. I'm gonna mix all of this up together, use the fork here to really mash up the banana, and then we're gonna bake it. So it was actually done in 30 minutes as opposed to 40 to 50. Me and Steph are gonna try it right now. It looks amazing. Not dry at all. So here's some detail shots. Steph has the butter on hers. I'm gonna grab this slice right here, or actually this one right here. Not dry, let's give it a try. Official taste test right here. Yummy. Oh yeah. You guys should definitely try this. This was a, this is a win in our book. Mm. You know what one thing that I miss about Pennsylvania, living in Pennsylvania, is that we had basements. In Texas, there's no basements. There's attics, but no basements. And that didn't really bother me until getting married. Because what happened, at least, you know, when I started living with my now, wife, Steph. When I was living the bachelor life, I didn't decorate for seasons. Steph loves decorating for seasons, which means I spend a lot of time coming up and down this attic ladder. Thanksgiving is around the corner. Halloween, it's over. It's time for the Christmas tree. This is the first year ever that I am decorating for Christmas before Thanksgiving, but I felt the peer pressure. All of our neighbors had their stuff up and I've had pumpkins up until today, and Thanksgiving's out for another week. So me and Mr. Bones here, we caved, and we're gonna start putting up Christmas. But I feel like I just decorated for Halloween about two weeks ago, which I did for the Halloween party. We did, I was just up here. Yep. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the third day of Christmas, trees up, decorations are in the process of being. There's garland and wreaths everywhere right now. Lights, garland, and mini Christmas trees all over my house. But we're heading to a wedding right now. So we're gonna wrap up the video right here. Thanks for tuning in. If you get an opportunity, make the protein banana bread. It was truly next level. I'm probably gonna finish that entire loaf off in the next 24 hours, guaranteed. We'll see you guys. So I just asked Steph the question as I was cleaning Remy's eye boogers out. How much would it cost, or how much would would you take to eat your dog's eye boogers? That's absolutely disgusting. I said $500. I would do oh. it for $500. They're just like these crusty little eye boogers. Nothing, nothing bad with that. Remy, would you let me eat your eye boogers for $500? Yep. Take that as yes. <laughs>